Shara Extinction Rebellion. Thank you all for coming out today. This is an important action in the lead up to COP26. We need to reclaim our future from the political and economic system that has failed us. Today's action isn't going to change the world straight away, we know that. But understanding why we're doing it and acknowledging that this will be a long struggle is important. So why are we actually here today? Extinction Rebellion's first demand is for governments to tell the truth about the climate and ecological crisis. We are in a climate code red, a code red for humanity. When I started with Extinction Rebellion, I used to say I was doing this for my grandchildren, thinking that they would be the first generation to be impacted by climate catastrophe. Now I realise it has come faster than anyone thought and is likely to impact me as well as all of you here today. In August this year, the UN declared that the world now faces a code red for humanity. Antonio Guterres, Secretary General, said the alarm bells are deafening and the evidence is irrefutable. Greenhouse gas emissions from fossil fuel burning and deforestation are choking our planet and putting billions of people at immediate risk. The science doesn't lie, no matter how steadfastly our governments refuse to respond to facts. They still tell us that it's a choice between saving the planet or protecting our lifestyles. But it's too late now for those choices. Government delays and inaction leave us with only one option, to fundamentally change the way we live. We're on a climate precipice and we need immediate action to deal with it. We must tell the truth. And of course, let's not forget the mainstream media are enablers of our government tactic of a delay. Yep. What we need from them is objective reporting that tells the truth on the desperate need to extract, stop extracting fossil fuels. Now just behind me is the State Administration Centre. Cabinet is meeting there right now and we demand that they declare a climate emergency. When the bill is declared on Wednesday this week, tell the truth Stephen Marshall. Join us on Wednesday on Parliament House Steps from 8am to 3pm to encourage the climate emergency declaration. Extinction Rebellion's second demand is act now. Our lives are in the balance because we fail to act. The tripod represents life in the balance. We face a physical environment that is becoming harsher and more extreme. We have inflicted this on the natural systems on which we depend and it is now impacting not only our quality of life but also life itself. Thousands of global species are going extinct every year and ecosystems are collapsing. A worsening climate means our lives are cut short. The health of communities is harder to manage and traumatic climate events like fire and floods and heat waves have become far more common. The forecast for the future is grim. Our economies, ecosystems and communities are changing. The Australia we know, now know might not exist in the Australia of the future. Yet as bad as we think it is here, there are global communities facing a far more frightening future. Communities in Africa, South America and Asia who are at the front line. Communities in the Arctic tundra, in Torres Strait and the Pacific are all being harmed by climate change right now. These are communities living at subsistence levels while we live in our comfortable bubble. This is not acceptable. Millions of people are on the move around the planet because of drought in some places and flooding in others. We can expect increasing numbers of climate refugees. The fight for resources is a very real fight for these people. Millions have died and more will. Our fight is a global one. We act on behalf of all, including future generations. In May this year, Justice Bromberg in the Federal Court said that the government has a duty of care to protect future generations from the impacts of climate change. In part of his finding he said, none of this will be the fault of nature itself. It will largely be inflicted by the inaction of this generation of adults, that's us, in what might fairly be described as the greatest intergenerational injustice ever inflicted by one generation of humans upon the next.